So everybody always says to shoot aim raw, but if you're unsure why, this video is going to have all of the details about that. I think that this is an excellent lens. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma and professionally I'm a software developer but my free time I love landscape photography and making related videos here on YouTube. In today's video I'm going to explain why it's typically better to shoot in RAW than JPEG. I'm sure you've heard a lot of people tell you that it's better to shoot in RAW including myself uh, but I think a lot of people especially more casual photographers don't really understand why and some photographers actually do prefer to shoot in JPEG. What's cool about this though is it's an area where I can combine my experience as a photographer and a software developer to explain some of the technical details in a way that's hopefully easy for you to understand. You're probably familiar with the notion that a RAW file is better than a JPEG because it allows you to do more editing on the computer uh, but I think, maybe I'm just a nerd, but I think that it's worthwhile to understand why that actually is. A RAW file is an image format that cameras output with little to no processing on the image. Unlike a JPEG, which is a widely used image format, RAW files are actually proprietary file types created by each camera manufacturer. But most RAW formats are still going to be supported by most computers and photo editors, so you don't really need to worry about that. RAW files use little to no compression, which I'll talk about more in a minute, and they support a higher bit depth, which I could actually make a whole video about bit depth, but basically that just means that you can have the maximum amount of color information that is supported by the camera, which gives you more space for editing and the best looking colors in your photo. A JPEG, on the other hand, does have processing applied to it, so things like your white balance settings come into play here, as well as some sharpening and some other camera-specific processing. And JPEGs are where you're likely to see a camera manufacturer's unique styles in your photos. JPEGs only use 8-bit color, they also use lossy compression. I don't want to get too technical about compression, but let me just explain lossy compression really quick. In a lossless file like a RAW file, there is a lot of color and exposure data in each pixel that you don't really see. If you've looked at an unedited RAW file, you've probably noticed that it looks much flatter than the JPEG from your camera and it doesn't have much contrast. When the camera makes the JPEG, it applies processing to it to add some contrast, for example, darkening the shadows a bit. Where the lossy compression comes in is that when the camera saves the file as a JPEG, some math is actually used to throw away any invisible data so that the darker shadows are locked in and you can't go back and brighten them back to where they were before because that information is now gone. This significantly reduces file sizes without changing the appearance of the photo at all but it makes it very difficult to do any significant editing because there just isn't much there to work with. Now there are times when you might want to shoot JPEG files. If uh, you know that you won't want to edit a set of images, then there's not really any reason to take the larger RAW files, or if you just need to save space on your memory card, a JPEG is better as well. On the other hand, if you know that you want to edit a photo, then it's better to shoot in RAW so that you can edit without any loss of quality. If you're not sure which you'll need or you forget to change the setting like I do, you can also set your camera to take both. Now this method uh, clearly takes up the most storage, but it does make sure that you always have the photo that you need. Personally, I use a full-size RAW file and a reduced-size JPEG file so that I can view and share the JPEG or edit and export the RAW files. So hopefully that helps you to understand the difference between a RAW and a JPEG file. If you're interested to see more videos with details about photo bit depth and compression, then let me know in the comments and I'll try to make videos about that in the future. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button on your way out and to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss more videos that I'm really excited to share with you in the future. As always, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.